Hi, my name is John and this is Special Focus. In today's video, we'll be talking about the much anticipated uh, MCU film, which has been recently re released this week or this weekend. Uh, it depends on which territory you belong to. I'm talking none other than the Marvels. Now, the, the first, uh, the, the sequel to the, what would consider a very successful MCU film, The Marvels, the first one, which has the protagonist, Carol Dan, versus the main character here. Now, it was pretty interesting when they first mentioned that there's going to be three main characters, female-led characters, in this sequel supposed to be, because they were having concerns regarding Brie Larson's star power to be able to carry the film. And there have been some negative feedback in terms of how she's being portrayed in the public eye. So there is a big question, will the sequel here, the Marvels, uh, do as well as the first one here? So we'll take a look at this particular article based on its apprehension here. So according to CNBC.com, uh, it mentions that the Marvels is probably headed for one of the worst MCU box office openings ever. And obviously, the openings is an indicator in terms of how much leg the, the film will last or earn during its entire uh, duration of its uh, showing. Now, the question here is uh, how well it's going to do or is it going to do as poorly as one as mentioned in this particular article. Now, it mentions that the initial predictions saw that the Marvel, you know, will earn somewhere between 70 to 80 million domestically, but that has already shrunk to a measly 60 to 65 uh, in recent weeks. And I'm, I'm very pessimistic here in terms of how, uh, obviously, the MCU has pivoted in terms of how it built its uh world uh, leading up to the avengers endgame which obviously did uh really well in terms of earning billions of dollars in the box office worldwide but af ever since after endgame and you know the pandemic uh it has sputtered significantly with maybe some exceptions of uh spider-man's no way home as well as uh the the guardians uh, galaxy volume 3 which one would consider was doing okay could be better but could be worse so you know you can't you couldn't fault the the, the performance of it but as for the rest of the mcu lineup from uh, the eternal shang chi uh you have even uh so even ant-man is uh to say the least, an abysmal performance because obviously one would expect uh, for a feature film MCU to, to reach a billion dollar mark easily. But that's not the case here. Anyway, uh, it mentions here that uh, the only MCU who did much uh, poorly in terms of earning less than $60 million was uh, 2015's Adman, as mentioned. And even... Going further back, uh, 20, 2008's Incredible Hota. So that's saying a lot in terms of, you know, how the mighty have fallen if uh, if you're talking of earning, you know, uh, sixty less than 60 million in the first weekend, which means that it's going to go downhill as the weeks go by. And if the domestic market or in the U.S. is a great indicator, well, obviously the international market, it's going to follow suit. And there have been a lot of, films or mcu dc films that have uh have faltered uh in in recent months and years which is kind of disappointing to say the least anyway the, the the problem obviously disney and marvel studios have struggled to reconnect with its audience in the post uh, end game era as mentioned earlier and let's take a look in some of the uh what do you call this some of the films that was released this year and Let's do some comparison in terms of uh, where is it going to stack up. Based on my opinion, I think it, it's not even going to reach 200 million. If it does, then it would be a surprise rather than expected here. So here we're using the website uh, thenumbers.com uh, in terms of box office performance. So obviously you can see that Barbie has already supplanted Super Mario Brothers the movie, earning close to 1.5 billion. Uh, and then Oppenheimer is close uh, to earning a billion. Obviously, the only 
only MCU film that's even in the top 10 for World Wild Box Office, as you can see here, is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which earned uh, a tidy sum of uh, close to $850 million worldwide. And if you look at the top 10, you only have Little Mermaid, which is a Disney film. Uh, even though it earned $600 million, uh, one would be concerned in terms of... Not 600 million, it's the wrong film. Close to 600 million here that I guess to uh, I can safely say that didn't even break even in terms of its marketing tool of trying to promote the film. Generating only abysmal 600 million, they needed to generate even more or even reach at least uh, a billion to, to be able to say that they did really well. And out of that, you can see it's already out of the top 10. You have Elemental, which even, you know, did even worse in the domestic compared to its international market. And you can see here in the top 14, you have Ant-Man only generating close to 500 million. And don't be deceived, even though it's close to 500 million, but the cost of a production of how much it took to, to produce it, to market it, typically you need to generate at least twice or even more uh, based on your uh, production uh, budget that you've spent. In terms of your marketing, trying to promote the film, and obviously the controversy that uh, that that arose from uh, from the actor Mr. Majors, who played the, the the villain in terms of Kang the Conqueror, and if you look further downwards, you can see here uh, even Indiana Jones is already you know one of the worst films of this year, uh, based on where it started decades ago to where it is now. Uh, and let's see, you have Flash here, didn't even reach uh, the 300 million mark, that's saying a lot. And as you can see here, and if you scroll down even further, uh, you see the Insidious film, Dungeons and Dragons, did poorly. Even Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mut Mutant Mayhem did even worse. And if we were to go further down, which is... In the top 40, you can see Shazam, which only garnered a little over 100 million. So it just goes to show if you were to look that the, in terms of performance of all uh, uh, Marvel or even DC superhero comic uh, book characters has you know, not done well, to, to, to say the least, which is pretty disappointing to say the least. And going back to the article here in terms of uh, the expectation of of the Marvel since it's showing now here in our region uh, I, I didn't bother watching it because obviously based on the trailer on the narrative that they do want to push uh, I'm not too excited of it and obviously there's no more uh, bigger narrative like how they built up uh, the 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 first uh, uh, Marvel uh, not Marvel uh, but how they built the MCU universe in terms of uh, having Thanos as the main protagonist here it was supposed to be Kang but you know, it has faltered and I don't know what the direction is. And even the the, the Secret Invasion, the Skrull Wars was supposed to be the second win for MCU. But they obviously you don't have the major characters pulling punches anymore without Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, you know, the main characters in, in Avengers. Who's going to pick up the slack? That's a missed opportunity here. So I don't know how they're going to rebound from this one. So the question is, is it worth your time watching, uh, uh, watching you know any MCU films moving forward here? And as mentioned in the, uh, uh, in terms of their performance, now <laughs> it says here is Marvel too much homework nowadays because obviously they expect you not only to watch the films but they expect you to watch their TV series in Disney Plus, and obviously those series are abysmal because I haven't watched any of those. From the Moon Knight series, even Wonder Vision, uh, you have She Hulk, and they have a plethora of other MCU uh, side characters, which no one even you know cares about the 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 narrative because the, you know obviously the 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 main comic book fan is focused on the main characters. Now having those uh, supplement characters in in tandem with the main characters is okay, but having a standalone, you know, think about. Uh, a holiday special for Hawkeye. I mean, did it do well? Was it even necessary? You know, did people clamor for a standalone Hawkeye film? 
I don't think so. But if Hawkeye is part of the Avengers, it's okay. But having your standalone movie, film, you know, or even uh, what was the other film? I forgot. Uh, the Black The Black Widow, right? Natasha Romanov. Uh, did 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 the fans clamor for a a separate film for a a Russian spy there? But you know, actually, it did poorly because uh, it was only right after the pandemic and when they reopened. So, and obviously, Disney sabotaged the, the performance by simultaneously releasing it in Disney Plus. Obviously, uh, uh, at the time, uh, what was the name of the actor? Scarlett Johansson sued the company and she was paid handsomely because of breach of contract which I thought was a big mistake for Disney to be to, to, to do that, to, to betray or to, to cannibalize the performance of the theatrical release of the film. But, you know, uh, that's in the past now. But the question is, what's going to happen moving forward? Because they have uh, a lot more installed for the MCU. And based on what's been happening in the past few years, it's not going too well. So the question is, are you going to watch the, the the launch of the Marvels and it's going to be worth your time and money. Leave your comments down below in terms of what you think of the film here. Anyway, that's it for this week. Come back again on Saturday for more business news. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.